Greetings, Taurus. This is Carrie at WooingNature.life. Welcome to August. We're here. I am going to be reading today from Soul Cards by Deborah Koff Chapin. I'm also going to be reading from the Enchanted Map, I do believe. Alternatively, I might be in the Wisdom of the Oracle, depending on what comes up with the first card. I'm going to be pulling one card from the Soul Cards just to kind of give us an overview and give us a sense of what you need to be, what what we need to be looking at for all this. And then I will pull three cards from Enchanted Map or from um, Wisdom of the Oracle. And then I will follow up with the Tarot. Um, I'll be doing Tarot Illuminati today. And we'll just let Tarot keep talking to us until... It has said all that it needs to say or until the spirits have said all they need to say. All right, so we are looking for the first card of the day, one card that represents a general focus for all my Taurians out there in the cipher. One card, please, for Taurus. All right, Taurus, looks like you're going to be doing some deep soul diving here and releasing. Look at those hands in the air. Looks like surrender to me if ever I've seen anything. If you're holding on to some deep, dark secrets or if you're holding on to something in your shadow, um, it's time to let it go in August. It's time to release those things. And it looks like it may be more than one thing. This is something that's been on your mind that's been, you know, hurting your brain, keeping you up at night. Um, something you've been wrestling with over and over and over again. And the spirits have heard you. That's what they're telling me right now. The void has heard. And the void is speaking back to you. And what the void is saying is to let go, to surrender. That which you have no control over, let it go. Okay? And you know what that is. Because if it involves other people, then the only thing that you can fix or the only thing that you can let go of, or the only thing that you can resolve is the part of it that belongs to you. If you feel like you've already done that part, then whatever the other person is holding on to, they've got to do this part for themselves. You can't do it for them, Taurus, so don't worry about it, okay? Let that part go. If there is something that is preying on your mind that you do have control over, then do that homework, do that void work, do that shadow work. Because the void and the shadow work, uh, the void is calling you, Taurus, that's it. The void is, is calling you, that's what they keep telling me. They want you to go into that empty space. Um, for those of you who may be dealing with um, with that, with the emptiness, if you're feeling empty, if you're feeling the void and it scares you, they want you to know that there's nothing to be afraid of, that you actually came from the void. You were born, born from the void. And so returning to the void for guidance is, um, is not, doesn't have to be scary. That's what they're telling me. How do you return to the void? You return to the void through meditation and prayer. So you'll pray first, ask your spirit guides for guidance into the void. You'll also ask for their protection and know and feel strong that your, or feel strongly that your protection is there and that they are giving you protection as you enter into meditation. When you pray um, into the void, you're praying for what it is you want to release, okay? So if you know there are things that you need to let go of, control issues, um, um, pain from the past, um, you may have been struggling with an issue, um, Taurus, that doesn't seem to want to get resolved or it keeps looming over your head, pray that into the void before you go into the void in meditation. And then, of course, when you go into meditation, you'll go with the intention to seek um, the answers of the void, and you will also go in and um, with the intention to retrieve those answers that are then going to allow you to elevate and to release that which has been on your mind. That's it. 
Um, if you need help with that, you can reach out to me. I'm at Carrie, K-E-R-R-I, at wooingnature.life. Otherwise, if you have your um, practitioners, meditation instructors, or if you're taking a meditation class, then you can talk to your instructor about that and see if they can help you with it. All right, I am moving right along into the Enchanted Map. I'll be pulling three cards from this deck, and that is to corroborate or to give us some direction. Maps give us direction. So we're looking for direction on how to how to deal with this that needs to be surrendered or released, okay? So we have the 18 breaking down to a number nine here, and that card is the magic stream. The magic stream to me reminds me of a fountain. It's like a fountain from heaven, a, a, a fountain from spirit. It's a never ending fountain of spirit. That's what the void is. That's what they're saying. That's why they're telling me to tell you not to be afraid of the void because when you go to the void, like when you don't, when you're fearful and you're not really, and you don't know what's going on, you feel like you're going into the dark and that feels scary, right? But really when you go to the void, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a, a, a fountain, um, a, a, a pouring out, a pouring out, a pouring out of information, a pouring out of love, a pouring out of um, um, guidance that's going to refresh you, that's going to replenish you, um, that is going to give your life more meaning, that is going to give you a, a lush landscape for living. I see the rainbow here in the background. The rainbow has always been a, uh, is a representation of a promise. I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting here, but I see the rainbow there. And the rainbow is a promise. It's a, it's, it represents a promise kept. Um, and that promise is that, um, that there is light, you know, and that from that light, because really what it is, is a, with a rainbow is you have the light that's shining through water, which water represents emotion, water in the air, mist in the air. Um, it's the light coming through the emotional side of yourself that is going to bring all of this beautiful experience to you. So when you enter the void, when you come out, you're going to have, there's, there's going to be so much to be illuminated. There's an illumination that happens. And again, this is, um, it brings such a lush landscape to your life. You know, it's like you're going to be able to really see the richness of your life. That's what's going to happen there. Number 31, which breaks down to a four, is the dry desert. Very different from this magical stream. Magical stream represents, you know, life and being able to um, grow things in this lush landscape that I talked about. Um, it seems like that this has been the landscape heretofore, that it's been dry, it's been barren. You've been searching for that refreshment. You've been searching for something refreshing in your life. And again, you've been searching for it because of what's been what you've been holding on to, what you haven't released yet, and avoiding the void. Don't avoid the void. Go into the void. The drop desert experience, though, has taught you a lot. You got to look at your at the steps that you've made during this journey. Um, it's one of those things where you can't, you don't miss your water until your well runs dry. So if it's been barren for you or if it feels like, oh, I'm trudging along and I haven't had any any release, any refreshment, nothing exciting, nothing, you know, to restore me or to restore or of a restorative replenishing nature, if your self-care options have been low or you haven't been getting that, if you've been feeling like you're parched, spiritually parched, mentally parched, emotionally parched, physically parched, then 
this is where you're going. This is why. This is the inner work that's going to open you up to some very new possibilities. So the third card I pulled is coming apart. This is an interesting um, card because it you see these two faces and you see these two individuals. This card is a 46, which breaks down into a one. So it implies to me that coming apart is actually bringing you back together. This coming apart feeling, if you're feeling like things have been falling apart or you've been coming apart, um, it's really just to get rid of that old stuff. And I'm seeing here in this card that um, seeing both sides of a situation, both the positive and the negative, seeing both the dry land and the um, refreshing waters is going to give you a whole new perspective. It's going to really um, bring you back to center. So if things are falling apart, let them fall. Let it go. Again, let the sleeping dog lie or let the thing fall apart. Release it. Let it go. That which isn't able to stay and stick and stay, let it go. And out of that, things are going to then return to the one. Okay? So don't be afraid to go into the void. Um... Use the dry desert experience as a point of reflection because after you do this work right here, um, then this is going to be your experience, right? And you'll be able to look back on this with a very different perspective, with a very different perspective. All right, I'm headed to Tarot Illuminati. We just want to get some detailing here, some details on our experience in August. What August is trying to teach you, Taurus, and tell you? The teach and the tell. All right. We have a Nine of Cups here in reverse. Nine of Cups is being able to um, count your blessings. It's about looking at your past experiences and what you've accomplished and what you have gained from your experiences. Nine of Cups is also associated with good luck. Now, by coming in in reverse, it doesn't mean you have bad luck. It just means that you have to go back and see um, how lucky you were, how lucky you have been. Okay? It's also about seeing your emotional accomplishments. That's what I'm getting here. Emotional accomplishments. That comes from a dry desert experience because it's nothing like being in a desert to make you really get in touch with yourself. I have the Seven of Swords here, also in reverse. Glad to see that because I associate Seven of Swords with... Um, um, well, they, it's the Seven of Swords is associated with deception and... Um, uh, somebody trying to take something could be thievery or whatever, but I associate the seven of swords with um, trying to get away with something or someone trying to get away with something um, that either doesn't belong to you or, um, or the act of deceiving and, and deception can come in all kinds of different forms. Like you can be deceiving yourself about what you can control and what you can't control. You can be deceiving yourself about this void because we already know that inside the void, there's something very, very powerful and very good that can come out of that. And you don't want to rob yourself of that. If we think about um, this card being about theft, you don't want to rob yourself of that experience. You don't want to rob yourself of... Um, any joy that you can have or the joy that you have experienced in the past. You know, you don't want to rob yourself of any um, positive possibilities that are waiting for you because of the experiences that you've had in the past. Sorry, my nose is itchy. All right, so we have Ace of 
Pentacles also in reverse this time. It's about being able to have some tangibles for you. You need some tangible lessons. You need that, that tangible experience. I'm so sorry about this nose. I feel like somebody's trying to come in to speak. So welcome spirits, whoever you are. You know, they used to say, that when your nose itches, it means somebody's coming. And I notice that sometimes when I'm sitting down to do these readings, my nose will itch. So I'm like, who's coming? Not expecting any visitors or anything like that, but it could be spiritual visitors. So if there are any spirits that are connected to Taurus, we welcome you here now. Recognize that you can recognize your presence. Maybe my nose will stop itching. But we've got this Ace of Pentacles, which tells me you need something tangible. You need this tan. You're looking for something, something that you can hold in your hand that has meaning. It could be a person. It could be a a, um, a word um, that is spoken to you that you can hold on to. You want something you can hold on to, but really you're supposed to be letting go. Really, you're supposed to be letting it fall. Okay. We've got the Three of Swords here, which means there's some disappointments from the past. I'm also getting that from this card here because the Nine of Cups is not in the upright position. I think that you're probably not seeing the positives. I don't think that you're really um, seeing what positive things came from probably this desert experience that you've been having. What you've been focusing on is the disappointment in it all which is why you want something tangible to go with. And they're willing to give you the tangible. They're willing to give you that tangible thing, but that's why you're going into the void. You're going into the void to get that, that nugget, right? To receive that nugget. And also to, to move um, past the disappointments, okay? We have the magician here in reverse, which is your power. It's about your your power, not just your power, but your ability to see and utilize your inner power. Okay. That inner power is um, it's a mutual exchange of energy, right? So your spirits are telling me that you got to utilize the resources that are given to you from spirit. Utilize the resources that are given to you from spirit. This is one of them. We're talking about um, the cards. <laughs> These are tools. These are uh, and what's coming from it. That's a tool. The tool is not being afraid of the void. The tool is meditation. The tool is prayer. The tool is reflecting um, on these past experiences and seeing the positives that are coming out of it. That's a tool. Utilize those tools. They're trying to work with you, but they need for you to um, be aware of that. And the best way to be aware of that is to do that meditation that you need to do. Go to the magic string. Okay. Go to your resources to your spiritual resources. And when you go to the spiritual, when you go to the spirit, they're going to give you more tools to work with. They're going to give you the nugget that you need. They're going to show you the love that you have in your heart and how love is expressing itself to you. They're also going to show you about your, um, your, um, your mind, how your mind works and how powerful it is and how you are able to speak things into existence. Um, but you just got to be careful about what you speak into existence because you need to do this work first, right? You need to release first. You need to um, release first. You need to go to the void and go to the magic stream first. And in that place is where you're going to get these messages. That's where the messages are going to come through, okay? Right now, that's not happening. That's why these cards are all coming in in reverse. There's something you're not seeing or something you're not aware of because literally the only card that came in in the upright was this heartbreak card. So it seems like that's the focus. The focus is on the dis 
on the disappointing factors of life. And those things are gnawing at you. Even if you're trying to be positive, Taurus, those things are gnawing. They're like, they're like lurking around on the, on the inside. Lurking around on the inside. So we have um, the Wheel of Fortune in reverse and the Two of Cups here, which to me, again, this is letting me know a little bit more about where this disappointment may be coming from. Could have come from a past relationship or something that needed to be changed that wasn't changed, which then may have um, had an effect on that. The relationship itself may have caused a a negative perception in yourself, or it may have been stagnant. That's the other thing about the Wheel of Fortune in reverse, because the Wheel of Fortune, um, um, it connotes um, movement of some kind, um, that there is movement happening, and when it's in reverse, it's like movement isn't happening. So I'm seeing that there is stagnation, possibly in a relationship or in relationships, or as a result of a relationship. And so you want your energy to be moving. You don't want it to be stagnant, and that's why they want you to go to the mag magic stream. The magnet stream is not, it's moving water. It's not stagnant water. A stream is constantly flowing. It's a constantly flowing stream. So that's not stagnant. So if your relationship was stagnant and it needed healing, which I'm seeing with this caduceus here in the card, if it needed healing because of the stagnation, then it's really about you being able to know the difference between what you can control and what you can't control, handle what you can control, release what you can release, and the rest is up to the other individual. Now, if the other individual that you were dealing with or are dealing with has become stagnant, you can't control that part, Taurus. You can't do anything about that. If they decided to stay stuck, you can't stay stuck with them. You have to move on. You have to move on. And moving on is taking care of you. And this is taking me back to the coming apart. So if it could be... Um, uh, if it's you and the other person that are coming apart because you weren't able to heal because either you or the other individual was not able to do the healing that's necessary, you do your healing and let them worry about theirs. It's okay to move on from a stagnant relationship, Taurus. It's absolutely okay. All right, so we got four of swords in reverse here. This is about um, care. Um, being able to look after you, being able to get connected to your own self, your own inner self. Um, it's about um, getting the, uh, the time that you need to yourself, again, so that your spirits can communicate with you and guide you and direct you if you haven't been getting sleep or if you've been tossing and turning over this issue, which I feel very strongly with this, especially because I said it's something that's been preying on your mind. Your spirits need to connect with you. And the best way for them to be able to connect with you free and clear is by you being able to get unbound from um, unwound or unwind so that you're clear. You have to be clear. If you're still wrestling with the problem, then they can't help you because you're still doing it. What they want is for you to take care of your part and stop wrestling with the part that doesn't have to do with you so that they can communicate with you about it and what's really going on. And the best way to do that is to relate, relax, and release. Get rid of um, the excess so that you can get that message through clear and get it through clearly. Got to get unbounded and, and untethered. Again, that goes along with this, the coming apart feeling that we were talking about before. It's not that you're coming apart. It's this, that you have to get unbound and you have to get unbound from this, uh, where's the stagnant? Where's that stagnant? Yeah. Getting unbound from this relationship that was probably not going anywhere. Okay. All right. Anything else for 
my Taurus strengths. Hmm. I like it. Strength. You are gaining your strength in August. You are getting a handle on that stuff that you've been worried about or concerned about that you have been, um, that's been dragging you. This dry desert experience has been strengthening you. Um, the past hurts this. Doing this work, going to the magic stream, it's there to give you your inner strength, the inner strength that you've been wanting, the inner strength that you've been needing, and the inner strength that you have already. It's getting you in touch with that. Yes, there is new, something new coming your way. It's new life. It's going to seem to come out of nowhere. But it's really coming from that magic stream experience. I see that back here. You are going to gain your inner power and you are going to gain your inner strength in the month of August, Taurus. And I'm really happy for you. I'm really glad that you are going to do this work. Um, it seems like anything that has been of a negative nature to you when you start doing that meditation work, you're going to start Things are going to start to come together for you. You're going to get that nugget. You're going to get something tangible um, for yourself, a tangible guideline for yourself that you can live by. And that's what's important because it's all about living. Okay. If you need to get a deeper reading, if you want a personal reading, you can reach out to me. Again, I'm at Carrie, K-E-R-R-I at wooingnature.life. I hope you enjoyed this reading. As always, I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great August, and I hope you're having a wonderful life.